Hey guys, welcome back to No Catchy Name. It's me, Ella. My voice sounds a little weird because I woke up this morning kind of sick. <clears throat> My throat's really sore and I hope that's the extent of it. <laughs> but it is Sunday morning. I think it is the 11th of March. <laughs> um, it's technically, what, 9.30, but you know, time just... Uh, spring forward so like in my body it's 8 30 in the morning um so i'm sitting here and devin's in bed he's off work today jesse's still at his grandpa's we'll be going and picking him up later today <clears throat> keep feeling the need to clear my throat but um i'm sitting here i just started a new crochet project just i was watching a crime show on tv i like watching like murder mystery and stuff like that but um i'm sitting here working on this i just started it oh glary 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 it is the Crochet Ruffle Sleeve Cardigan by Sorella. <clears throat> I posted about it on the Facebook group that I was going to um, make it. And I went out and bought. I wanted like, I can't remember what the color of it is, but it's like a dusty rose color. But they only had three skeins of it at Hobby Lobby. And I didn't want to wait because I'm not the kind of person who like orders stuff and waits for it. I'm like an instant gratification kind of person. So I got uh, six of these because I like this color here. It's like a mustardy. And it's called Sun Gold. They had six of those, so I got my head bottle six of them. I'm making an extra large size. I'm hoping that will fit me loosely. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I have to keep, keep clearing my throat. But yeah, I posted a video yesterday, or last night, asking about um, what kind of things to talk about on these videos. <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and um, a few people have already answered that. One of them was Amy, and she said to... <coughs> Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> she said um, to talk about like how I got started crafting and um, how I came up with the name No Kitchen Name. And this, the latter is extremely simple. <laughs> the way I came up with No Kitchen Name is I couldn't come up with a name for my channel. I knew I wanted to make a crochet channel. Uh, Margaret Olander got me interested in it. My very first video was an entry to one of her giveaways that she had. <clears throat> I think I have since deleted that. I can't remember if it's still on there. It's still there. A lot of my first videos are really weird and awkward. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just, I was trying to come up with some kind of name, you know, like a catchy name that people could remember and, um, you know, would be branded as me. So people, you know, when they hear it, they would automatically think of me. And I couldn't come up with anything. Um, I used to make candy and chocolate uh like suckers and su hard sucker on candy just stuff like that and caramels and stuff and i was i used to want to make that into a business and i was going to call it sweeties and it was going to be sweet s-w-e-e-t space e apostrophe s because ella but it's going to be said sweeties you know but um and i was trying to figure out a way to get that to work for crochet but it didn't really you know it didn't really fit so I was trying and trying and trying and then I just, I was like, well, I can't think of any catchy name. And then I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> so then I just, uh, edited, you know, changed it around to no catchy name. And that's how I came up with the name no catchy name because I couldn't think of anything else. And I promise you guys I'm not this pale. Um, you're right in front of the window. So it's just shining in and I'm wearing black. So it's making me look extremely pale. Well. Although I may be today because I really don't feel too good. I might have to take a nap before Jesse comes home. But uh, I'm working on the foundation chain. I hate that. That's like the worst row in the whole thing is working into the chain. But I also hate making chainless foundations. That takes me a year. I haven't got the swing of that, so I usually don't do it unless the pattern actually calls for it. I do like the way it looks, but um, it is too time consuming for me. Basically, I'm working on the back panel of this right now, and it is <clears throat> it's basically double crochet rolls. I have for the size I'm making, I have to make 54 double crochet rolls, and that'll be the length. It's like 22 inches wide and 27 inches long ish. My gauge is usually bigger, so it'll probably be longer, but that's okay because I mean it's gonna be like something I wear around the house to be comfortable in, so it's that's okay if it's big and squishy and all that stuff. I'm using my Jay hamburger hook that Jesse bit the top off of when he was like not even a year old. It was after we moved in here. I still got the hamburger bun. I just haven't glued it back on. 
but um, it's a Susan Bates. I've really started liking Susan Bates. I want to switch all my hooks over to Susan Bates eventually. <clears throat> I don't know, because I like the little hooky bit up at the top. It like catches the yarn better for me. Anyways, that's how I came up with the name of my channel. <clears throat> Nothing special. I just literally couldn't think of something. <laughs> So it is what it is. There's no catchy name. Except it's kind of, you know, people know it now as me, so that's cool. But, um, and the next part that she said was how did I start, uh, crafting, I think. And I originally learned to crochet just basic, like, stuff like this. Just, my mom taught me when I was about 12 how to chain and then do single crochet and double crochet back and forth. Actually, I think she didn't teach me double crochet. I think she taught me half double crochet. Because she was taught <clears throat> by her aunt while her mom was in the hospital. Her aunt was a very avid crocheter. Her name's Kitty. She made all kinds of afghans and very pretty ones. And she used, I remember she, watching her, she used little tiny, tiny yarns to make afghans with. <clears throat> and um, she was an older lady. I think she was younger than my grandma. And my grandma was... 73 when she died and it was around the same time so she was probably in her late 60s she's also since passed away she died in a car accident a few years after my grandmother did <clears throat> anyway she taught her mom was interested she watched her and was interested in uh, learning how to do it wait a minute that wasn't when granny was done that was in 2002 when I was 12 <laughs> That's when my Uncle David was missing. He had drowned and they were looking for his body. Very tragic, I know, <laughs> and morbid, but while they were looking for his body, um, <clears throat> you know, all the family was sitting, waiting, hoping to find him alive because at the time, you know, they didn't know he would drown. They just, he was just missing. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, he's off the morbid stuff. She was sitting there crocheting then, and that's how my mom got interested in it. So my mom learned how to chain do single crochets and I believe half double crochets is as far as she got to learning then and even now I think that's all my mom does I don't think she ever learned to pass half double crochet <clears throat> and all the afghans she made over the years were just half double crochet back and forth I and mean, she made a lot of them <clears throat> yeah cause when my granny did pass away one of the afghans my mom made was put in the coffin with her it was covered her legs you know but um Anyways, when mom learned, I was starting to be interested in it because, you know, she started buying yarn and uh, hooks and stuff. I don't know, I guess she got Walmart yarn and Walmart hooks because, you know, that was way before I ever knew about Hobby Lobby or anything. Cause we're from a very, very small rural area. And uh, I didn't really start going further than home to shop and stuff until I was already an adult. Really, until Devin and I got together, we started, you know, taking off random trips to, like, Nashville and stuff. But anyways, back to what I was talking about. Yeah, I finished this first row. Woo! <laughs> no, wait, let me. I've got it pulled up on a notepad on my computer with all the rows on it so that every time I finish a row, I can backspace off. Like I just took off row number one. <laughs> so now I'm starting row number two. <clears throat> um, I wish this was half double crochet because I could just fly through half double crochet projects. I think it's because that's one of the main things I first learned. But, um,. So I, I don't remember exactly when I asked mom to show me how to do it. I mean, it's been a while ago. I'm 20, I'm almost 28, and I was 12-ish. Um, maybe 13-ish, I don't know, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and uh, she at some point taught me how to chain and taught me how to single and double. And then I pretty much just messed around with that for years. I remember making my other granny, my dad's mom, uh, oven mitts. And I made her, I was going to make her a blanket by running out of yarn, so it was like that wide and blanket length. So she just used it, she draped it over the foot of her bed and uh, said that she could wrap it around her shoulders or something. You know, like a shawl, wait, what are they called when they're square? There's a, a stole or something like that. But, um, and that, I remember that was in, uh, I think it was called Banana Berry. Red Heart Super Saver. It's that blue, yellow, green, like, variegated. Like, I loved that yarn when I first started. Every time I bought yarn, it was that. <laughs> or Bon Bon. I still really like Bon Bon. I think it makes really cute amigurumis. Um, I need to get some more of that. I like it. 
think I only got like a little tiny ball left and I don't have any but anyway I used all of it on my uh the bird I, if I can remember I'll put a picture up if I can't I won't <laughs> um I made it early in my uh videos one of my earlier videos it was like springtime last year it's coming close to a year that I've been doing this couple, next couple of months I think June or July is when I started so that's cool yeah, I kind of just dabbled in crocheting basics, you know, blank Afghani type things and pot holders all the way up to I was 23 in 2013. Well, maybe the end of 2012 into 2013. It was when my dad was sick. I have a very morbid past, apparently, <laughs> and it's all connected to crochet. I think my dad had cancer in his esophagus. It's like right here, actually. He, um, by the time they found it, he it was already so bad that there, there was nothing they could do with it. It was in stage four. The tumor had already grown all the way through and around his esophagus and through that artery that's somewhere in there. I'm not a scientist, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so he, they found out that he had, uh, yeah, because it was 2012. So I was 22-ish. Uh, March of 2012 is when he found out he had cancer. In January 2013 is when he died. So it was less than a year that it all happened. And I think that that, I guess it was kind of like a coping mechanism maybe. That is the time that I got really into crochet. And you know, now that I'm thinking back on it, that's probably what happened. I was, I was using it as like a coping mechanism at home. Because at the time I was in college. Um, and uh... I was going to college to be a medical lab technician and so I was you know I was going to school and then I'd come home and have to deal with my dad you know declining quickly he declined very quickly um, and it's crazy how when people are sick nothing happens until they find out they're sick and then it just starts happening all at once and it's like a mental thing it's almost like if you never told someone they had cancer they could live longer because they wouldn't be dwelling on it it's like a mental mindset or something but anyways, um, that is the year that I started doing crochet a lot. I had become the main person in the house doing things because my brother had a full-time job. My dad was sick and my mom was taking care of him. So I was the one out doing all the errands and grocery shopping and all that kind of stuff, you know. So uh, I think that's when, you know, I must have been buying yarn while out running around doing stuff. And then I remember I would come home and that was... That was right around the time I discovered Netflix. I don't know how long it's been out, but back then Netflix had all kinds of awesome shows on it before all these movie companies got mad at them for streaming their movies. And I remember they had a bunch of Nickelodeon shows, and I grew up watching Nickelodeon. So I would come home, and I would sit in my bed, because I had a TV at the foot of my bed, and I would crochet and watch, like, Hey Arnold and all that and stuff like that. All those shows I grew up watching. I wish Netflix still had that but, um, and the first project I ever finished that wasn't like a, a blanket or a potter thingy <laughs> was a hat. And I don't think I have a picture of it. If I, and I'll try to find at least the designer's picture because I don't think I have a picture of mine. I used to, but I don't know if I still have it. And it was a frog hat with these big old eyeballs on the top of it. And that was the first hat I ever made and that was the first, um, thing other than like a blanket other than a square you know that I made and I was so proud of that hat I remember that was before my dad got delirious he was still you know him so I remember I went in there and showed it to him and he thought it was cool and my mom thought it was cool and all that and then around that same time I just when I made my first immigrant me which was a rabbit I do have a picture of it I'll pop it up this thing I remember it took me so long to sew together and I think my mom still has it I think I gave it to her no one knows she still has it. She keeps, she's one of those moms that keeps everything. Um, I'm trying not to be that mom. Like the other day, Jesse's first shoes that he actually walked in, you know, they're obviously too small for him. And one of them's at his grandma's house and one was here. And I was cleaning, so I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and throw this away. And I had a hard time throwing it away. But then I was like, you know what? I have pictures of the day we bought them for him. I put them on him and he'd walk around in them. So that's good enough. You know, I don't need to keep the thing. I just need to keep the pictures. I'm a big picture person, if you haven't noticed, from my scrapbooking talk things but um I'm always taking pictures 
never in any either. I have to keep telling Devin that he needs to start taking pictures of me and Jesse because there's not going to be any proof that I was his mom. <laughs> but, um, let's see here. What was I talking about? I made my first amigurumi. I made a cowl. It's like an octopus, um, tentacle ca cowl. It was really snug on my neck and it was green. I remember it was like that evergreen from Red Heart. And it had little squiggly curly cues or whatever hanging down from it. It was really cool. And I'll get a picture of that. I saw it the other day. And I've pretty much just been crying ever since then, crocheting ever since then, hardcore. Like, I've been doing it ever since I was 12, but when I was about 22, 23, when Dad was sick, is when I really picked it up and started doing it. Finished row two, woo! Ooh, my first row was way tighter than my second row. I don't care. I'd be alright. No one would notice but me. And you. <laughs> but, um, I hate, I so hate that I didn't have that pink color. I wanted it so bad. It's so pretty. I like pink. You probably couldn't tell by the clothes that I wear. I always wear dark clothes. I don't know why. It's just I'm comfortable, like, not standing out. <laughs> and, um, which is real funny because when I was a teenager, I was very emo. I was, like, borderline golf. And, uh, stood out like a sore thumb, especially in my neck of the woods because... Typically, the kind of people around here are either like Southern Baptist type people or um, rednecks. I used to always joke that I was a, either a red billy or a hilly neck because <laughs> um, my dad was an extreme redneck. Like, he was the hold my beer kind of a guy. And my mom came from like an Appalachian hillbilly type past. <laughs> so, we always joked growing up that we were a mixture of hillbilly and redneck. But, um, <coughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of more stuff I completed early on. And after my dad died, we had to move out of our house. Um, because my mom wasn't working. She's been, uh, legally disabled since I was nine. So she's got a lot of heart conditions. And, um, so we moved into a rental house. And at the time, it was just me and her. And my sister was already married and already had been at the time. He was, like, a year old, I think. And, uh, I don't remember where my brother was. I guess he moved in with somebody. <laughs> but for a while, it was just me and my mom in a rental house. And I crocheted a lot then. That's when I was finished college classes and had to go on to my clinicals. Which were a two-hour drive every single day. I had to get up at four in the morning just to get there on time. But, um, I crocheted a lot there. then I took it to work with me and crocheted there and everybody would be asking questions. I made a lot of baby hats around that time. A lot of people were asking me to make baby hats. Yeah, and it's just, I guess it's just went up from there. So I guess I really started a hundred, you know, like hardcore crocheting when my dad was sick in 2012. So I'm, I'm guessing that was probably a coping mechanism that I came up with without even knowing it. And when I, I worked at Walmart, when me and Devin were together, like when we first, well, it was like a couple of years into our relationship, but I had already <laughs> moved into his dad's house. I just kind of moved in without even asking, and his dad was totally fine with that. It was funny, I just, I, I started going over there every uh, weekend when Devin was off work, and then it just kept getting longer, my stays just kept getting longer and longer, and then a few months later I just lived there, <laughs> and it was funny. That was before his dad started dating the woman that he's with now, and um... So I would like, in the middle of the night, once his dad went to bed, I would clean and do laundry and everything. And he'd wake up and the whole house would be clean and all that. Because, you know, it was just him and his two kids, so it was the way you would think it would look. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That was so, that was so fun. I love thinking about our good old days. <laughs> we went on a little date last night. I mean, he had to work over, because it was Saturday yesterday, um, so he had to work overtime, but he got off early. He got off at, um, uh, 7-ish, so by the time he got home, it was 8-ish. He got off at, like, 7.30, and then got home around 8. So we drove to our neighbor in town where the nicer restaurants are, and we had steak dinner. And we went to Walmart, and I bought a Bolly Hard, because I needed another, um, Delft Blue. Because I'm using that for my crochet along that Terry's hosting. But I also used it to make all my little earths. I made four of them. So 
So I ran out. I only had like a little ball left. And I, I needed it for my crochet along with Harry. So I went ahead and bought another ball of it. And I was gonna, I was looking at the Mandala Baby, but I, for some reason I thought it was a weight, a four weight. I thought that I had read somewhere that it was worsted. But it's not. It's still three. And it almost seemed thinner than the original Mandala. And so although it's really pretty, I probably won't buy any. Maybe a couple balls and make like a blanket or something, but I really just don't like working with a little skinny yarn. I'm a worsted weight kind of girl. And then we end up buying Jesse a toy. <laughs> he let, he's into trucks and um, construction things and all that. And I found a garbage truck and he loves garbage trucks. And our Walmart doesn't have any. So when I found it there, we went and bought him one. So it's sitting in the floor already open, ready for him to come home to it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm working. I'm almost on my brow for row three. Ooh. Been 20 minutes, that's all right though. I like longer videos. <laughs> Cause, you know, the, the point of these videos is to for you to sit there and crochet while I'm sitting here crocheting and bab babbling. <laughs> if you have any other um, questions about you know, anything, just leave it in the comments and I will talk about it in one of the upper, upcoming, upper, upcoming um, crocheting chat videos. I'm almost done, right round three. Apparently I'm concentrating and can't um, talk while I concentrate, <laughs> but um, yeah, I love crocheting. I'm so glad that I discovered it. I remember when I was younger, probably like 10 or so-ish, I learned how to knit just very, I feel like I'm increasing. I should probably count these stitches. <laughs> I'm not fast forward this. No, I'm not. I guess my gauge is just, look at that, it's, it's curling. My gauge has just gotten really loose, I guess, because I'm talking. That's okay, though. I, I don't think it really matters because it's just a cardigan I'm going to be wearing around the house. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. I'm not ripping it out either. What was I saying? I never I forgot what I was mentioning. I forgot what I was talking about when I started counting. Uh, okay, starting round four now. Is anybody else making this pattern? I know I saw a lot of people were interested in it. And actually, someone was starting it. I don't remember who now, though. I'm gonna go look. <laughs> Donna, Donna Powell. <laughs> she started it. She's a, a lot done with it too. I think she said she's almost done with the back and she's already started the left and right. So she's ahead of the game. And what color are you making it in, Donna? I might see it before I get this video out. <laughs> I wanted to make it in. I love this yarn because I know it's softer. I didn't want to buy fancy yarn because I'm not a fancy yarn kind of person. Um. So I just thought I'd go with Red Heart, or Red Heart, I love this yarn, because it is a really soft acrylic. And it should stretch a little bit, you know, as I wear it, so, and wash it. So it may end up coming out a lot bigger than I meant it to, but that's all good. If it gets too big on me, I'll just give it to someone. Alright, I guess I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and cut this off because I'm starting to feel I don't feel too good at all I think I'm getting sick I'm going to sit here and crochet until Devin gets up and see if he has any plans for today actually I need to wake him up here in a few minutes it's almost 10 technically it's almost 9 so I don't know if he's going to want me to let him sleep longer or what <laughs> but yeah I'm going to go ahead and hop off here and try to get this edited and up as quickly as I can and I'll see you guys in the next video for sure for, um, yeah, Friday for the next podcast and maybe before then in another video. Actually, I think I had one come out today. Yeah, it was a craft haul. I had it scheduled. But it's not crochet, so y'all might not care about it. <laughs> but I will go ahead and hop off here and edit it and I'll see you guys next video. Bye.